Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Ecosystem Interviews, where Fez and I chat with uh, ecosystem projects in the in the Icon ecosystem. Um, ask them all about what they're doing, what they've got coming up, what they're all about. And today, we are joined by the Framed team. So, um, round of applause for the Framed team. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, guys. How are you doing, Andy? How are we doing? We're doing great. Uh, thank you for having us. It's a uh... Pleasure to be here again. It's the second time I think I'm, I'm on an interview with Fez. Uh, yes. Yeah. How's Jeff not, not doing? Not the second time we've spoken, but, but yeah. no, no, no. It's second time. second time we've been on an interview. No, we we talk we talk quite a lot in the background. <laughs> Glad to be here, guys. Thanks for thanks for having us on. We obviously appreciate it. So I'm good to be a part. Jeff, is this is this your first camera on interview? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, correct. Yeah. There we go. Uh, the community is going to love us. This is a face of you. For Jeff, been hiding, so no, nah, it's yes, good, to, yeah. good to be on. But with good. a highly recognizable voice, though, because we've all seen the Yeti uh, videos uh, pop yeah. up, um, and I do yeah. recognize that voice out of a million. So <laughs> <laughs> that's so what that is. We'll, Yeti, so. we'll get to Yeti um, um, in a bit. Um, good that you guys are here. Good that you're happy and healthy. Uh, I say let's kick it off with our first um, interview round of questions. I'll, I'll open it up. Um, for anyone watching or listening who isn't familiar with uh, Framed, could you guys uh, just give us a short rundown of what Framed is, who you are, and, and what it is that you do in the Icon ecosystem or outside of it as well? Um, I suppose I'll pass it to uh, Jeff. Yeah, so obviously um, we start, and Andrew um, Burns, who was obviously part of Rhizome in the, the early stages, and I um, actually started the company with a with a different name so it was originally crypto whale portraits um and that was taking let's go on back uh, oh, probably 18 18 months ago i'm um, coming up to two years um now and then obviously we we've branched across to the the icon ecosystem naturally um i was a part of it anyway with icon bet and a, and a few other things and then um andrew's obviously been heavily involved uh, and then, yeah, we sort of rebranded, um, you know, when Andrew, when Andy came across, too many Andys, um, <laughs> and then we've sort of developed and kept developing. So um, Andy can probably go into more with our development services, um, but yeah, we've become more than just an NFT sort of company. And um, now we're all in that, the different stages of development, helping um, other other teams build and um, yeah become become part of the ecosystem and hopefully achieve success. Yeah. So what what started as a simple NFT project now evolved into uh, you know something. The, the the scope increased so much in a sense that we are now thinking of the, the whole idea of Framed is to be um, like an ecosystem of interconnected NFT projects. Uh, yeah. And it, not necessarily just NFT project, but as well service providers. So that's that's that yeah. was the, the bigger expansion. Um, how detailed do you want me to talk about Frame? Should I go into the details or just keep it brief? It's been it's, it's been a good roundup, and <clears throat> I can talk to it. If if you go to your guys' website, Frame.art, you have an ecosystem tab. So that says enough about how the project. Uh, you talk about scope increase. I think as soon as you start yeah. adding an ecosystem tab to your NFT project, you know that you're <laughs> you're scoping out and broadening out. Um, yeah, true, true, true. On on you guys. So you mentioned um, Andrew. Then we've got Andy here and Jeff. Um, what is your guys's like value add to the team or your 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 skill or you know how do you divide the tasks uh, within Framed? What what is it that you are good at? I would say. <laughs> To be to be honest, a Andy's a workhorse. He's the, <laughs> he's the uh, you know he's the, he's the ideas and the, the brains, especially behind the frame token. So, um, you know, him and Andrew worked on that um, long and hard. Um, I sort of just I sort of just managed the the communication, being in the Discord and um, engaging with the community. That's sort of my my strength. Um, anything when you start adding taxes and and numbers in is is too difficult to, <laughs> too difficult for me. So I'm out straight away when it comes to anything mass. Um, but yeah, look, my, my sort of role is just being engaged uh, with the community in, um, you know, talking to other projects and uh, just being part of part of that side. Then obviously Andy's 
Andy's come on and helped with the communication uh, side and um, he's, he's definitely lifted uh, that to another standard and made us a lot more professional. Obviously, you know, he was part of the, the whole rebranding, um, the whole, you know, becoming framed and um, all our icons and all that kind of thing. So, you know, he's been, he's been a fantastic, I mean, a absolutely fantastic addition to the team. Um, you know, I've told him a hundred times, but I don't think you can tell anyone enough how well they're doing. So, you know, Andrew and I do highly appreciate him being part of the team and um, everything he does. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> the, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be part of the team. And uh, I mean, because we're such a small team, everyone wears many hats, uh, which makes sense. I mean, I'm sure you would know. Um, like Andrew, who sends his regrets, he would have liked to be here, but you know, the timing doesn't suit him. Uh, Andrew is the... Uh, main dev so he's the guy who actually builds most of the products um he's the guy who built all of our initial frame smart contracts uh, he's the guy behind anything that has to do with coding so fez fez know, knows him well and knows how good he is um i'm more of a you know we joke around like i'm the uh, strategist of the team so i come up with ideas i come up with uh, tokenomics uh, i come up with i do a lot of the modeling the i also uh, the so social media to some extent uh, some of those threads um uh, work with the community so it's 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 a mixed bag everyone wears many hats we have thomas who came along as a developer as well recently so thomas spends his time oh, working on contracts especially now that we have uh, we're working with some with some clients as part of our dev services Thomas is busy with that. We have Alton, uh, part of the team. Alton is a, is a dev developer as well. He's mainly focused on the Thania um, contracts and the Thania engine that's going to run the game and the, the battle engine, basically. Hmm. Um, yeah, so we, we also have uh, some, some of our artists who work with us. We have David. He's the artist behind uh, the Yeti collection, obviously. David is, again, someone who's worked with a lot of high-profile companies like Disney, Netflix, um, and the likes. We have uh, Thomas, uh, Tom, Tom the, the man behind Tom's Toons. He, he's, he's the one we recently featured an article about. So he's the one who worked on Spider-Verse, the animation of Spider-Verse. Right. Yeah. I, I won't have the chance to see it in Dubai. It's been banned. Uh, I know. I'm, 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 I feel sad for you, my friend. Yeah, uh, I can't see worry. Yeah, I'm happy to, to relay it word by word. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Look, come down to Australia. At the, at, we can have a face to face sit down interview and watch the movie yeah, as well. Two, soon. Two, soon. Two soon. Hopefully, Hopefully soon. soon. Hopefully soon. Yeah. Uh, so we've got Tom. We've got uh, Brian. He's the artist now working on the farms. All of them, honestly, are people who've worked with uh, Netflix, Disney, uh, extremely talented artists, very high caliber people. And we're lucky, honestly, to have them as part of the team working with us. Sounds good. I Sounds think, very uh, good. This was one of the things I loved. Um, even when you were doing some of the one per one collections, Tom's Tunes, I think it was called. Um, yeah. It is not just random, not some artist you've hired on Fever or anything like that. Like these are professional artists who, who have been, who are in the top of the game, in the top of the field, making sensational movies, um, you know, being being animators in these movies. And, and these are the kind of talents you have and who actually create your art, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to skimp over this quickly. Uh, I, I wanted before we go into frame and yetis and the tokens, I'm going to really, oh, we're going to go crazy. <laughs> but um, I, I want to talk about your dev, um, some of the comments you made earlier, like framed is not just about the NFTs and everything you're releasing. You also provide a lot of services. Can you just highlight um, uh, 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 yeah. smart contracts as one of them, but what exactly are the services you'll provide? So um, it was in a sense, sort of like a natural progression for us. Um, to go this way for a couple of reasons. The, the idea behind Framed is to, have, to be this ecosystem of interconnected projects, you know, with a shared liquidity, and I'm not going to go into those details. Um, one easy way for us to get a lot of projects on board and join our ecosystem is if we tell them, you know what, we have this amazing idea. If you want to get into the space and you don't know how, well, let, let, let us develop things for you. We'll develop your smart contracts. We're, we're, we're build the system for you. 
and then you can just be part of our ecosystem and you basically plug it. So that's that's one way. The, well, that's one reason. Sorry. The second reason was because it's a good way for us as well to um, bootstrap funding for Framed. Uh, Framed is a self-funded project. The team basically uh, funds uh, all the uh, you know expenses that are necessary. We pay everything out of our pocket, plus whatever, of obviously, from the NFT sales that we have, um, which are not a lot if you consider the icon bond. So we need, we need this revenue. So one way was, okay, we have the skill set, even if it means delaying some of our own projects, it would be good for us to do this because we, we'd be helping out other people, number one. We'd be making new connections in the space and we'd be basically funding, uh, funding our own project. And what we offer is obviously smart contract design. Uh, it doesn't have, it's fr from something as simple as a you know, minting contract or, or a token contract to DAOs and voting systems and things of the sort, which we are already developing for some of our clients. Um, we've uh, recently revealed that we've been working with penguins. So we've been working on their penguin uh, POW. Uh, the whole, they, they're, they're releasing a white paper soon, which will showcase the full scope of their project. project. It's actually a very complex um, project, and they have, they have a nice vision, and we're happy to be uh, working with them. And they're actually part of the ArtFi ecosystem as well. So they joined as an ecosystem partner. Um, we also offer uh, web design services. So we've partnered up with an award-winning web design studio. Um, again, they're the ones who are now building our new Yeti website. I might okay. might share maybe my screen alpha. later to give you some alpha. Oh. I can show you a little bit the Yeti website. Um, when is when it? We, <laughs> might, yeah. No, I will, I will. I can't, I can't <laughs> say something and then say no. Definitely. Best behave. <laughs> We'll do it at the end so people watch the full interview. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. Oh, don't tell them. No, it could be in the middle. It could be at the end. It could be at the start. We, we, we'll, keep right. we'll keep it random. Very um, nice. Yeah, yeah. So we're working with Penguins. Uh, we've, we've designed their new website, by the way. That's an alpha drop. So there's yeah. amazing website. Penguins new website is going to be jaw dropping, honestly. Might, might, be, might be better looking than the Yeti one. Um, and we're also working recently with Alter. We're going to build their uh, cruise um, DAO contracts, as well as their minting contracts and some web design services as well for them. So we're keeping busy. Sounds really, right. so, so, sounds sustainable. I think it's a, a great sustainability play offering the, uh, yeah. the, the the services, and you yeah. know it speaks to your strengths as a team. And I guess everyone who uh, has invested in the framed NFT projects is actually genuinely happy to hear all this because it kind of you know gives more Definitely. confidence that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, frame will be around it speaks, it speaks to the credibility of the team and it is something quite sustainable um, and any revenue we make from our dev services also features into our token system which eventually benefits the token holders as well so it's a win-win for everyone cool okay that's good that's good um i i wanted more clarity personally so i got that in there um but, but it's a good highlight and and you know it's it's one of the things like it a lot of people, like before I knew Andrew, for example, I had all these ideas and, and then I used to share it with him and we used to go back and forth and like people have ideas, but sometimes don't have, don't know where to go and start and, and get started. And it's not just, you know, they don't know, as you said, the framework, the tokenomics, what well, make that idea actually come to fruition takes a lot of work. It's not just, I have a dream and the token is, is built and it's done. No, so, so it sounds like you've got a full fledged, um, system in place, which, which is great to hear. David, what yeah. else have we got? I was wondering, um, so that's the design, uh, sorry, the services uh, part of Frame that you're keeping busy with. And you mentioned it kind of, it might delay your own project slightly because it's a necessary uh, thing to do. And I guess everyone's okay with that because of the sustainability angle right here. Um, when we talk about your project, um, which frame projects, if you can give us a rundown, are currently live or are possibly like around the corner uh, of, of going live? Uh, we uh, we had uh, I I tend to talk a lot, so Jeff, feel free to stop me anytime. And then that's fun. <laughs> um, we have the Yeti. The Yeti obviously is live. We have the crypto whale portraits um, that was done under the crypto whale uh, brand yeah. earlier on. That's on craft. It's a sold-out collection. 
We have Yeti, obviously, is the first ArtFi um, project that is live now. We have the farms just around the corner. The mint will be uh, mid-July, July 17th. And then um, towards the end of July, early uh, August, we're hoping to get the staking done and people can start staking their Yeti to continue to earn uh, frame tokens. So that's just around the corner. And obviously we have Thania, which would be next after that. Thania, we're hoping somewhere in Q1 2024, but I, c I cannot, uh, the actual game might be ready towards in Q1 2024. Um, there's still quite a lot to do. We're, we're, we're working. Every day brings us closer. We're, in terms of art, we're 65% there, I think. Um, yeah. The AI engine is maybe 90% there. Um, the website is maybe 80% there. Uh, we still need to make a few changes to the website of the game, the UI, the interface, everything. Um, the only thing that is standing in the way of us launching the game faster is uh, obviously uh, resources. And because the artwork is hand-drawn, every piece, every card is drawn by hand. It takes time. So that is that. That is also one of the reasons why uh, we yeah. have to do it. Because we can see on uh, Twitter every week, every two weeks, a new like character from the Thania verse gets introduced. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've, we've released is... around 30 something characters so far. Mm. Yeah, okay. And what do you know the total amount that's going to span the. Yeah, we have 85 cards in season one. So there's going to be multiple seasons of Thania. Yeah, yeah. Uh, season one will be 85 cards. Uh, and then we've completed around 55, I think, 56 so far. Yeah. Those are drawn and finished. We still have around 30 to go. Yeah. So, Hope yeah, you can keep the cast cool. together for all the seasons. That would be good too. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got the that's that's thing, yeah, the trading card game. Yes. Being um yeah, we're we're seeing we're seeing the cards kind of come through, but we know that that's further uh down the line. The Yeti collection has been launched. Is it is it a year ago, six months ago? I never know in crypto. May May twenty seventh. 2020, yeah, yeah. May 27 last year. So, so th that got launched. Has it, has, it, has it sold out yet? Not yet, Not no. Yet. We're close. Almost there. Almost yeah. there. Almost, yeah. I think we have a thousand NFTs to go. And because yeah. I purchased Yeti when, the, when it first launched, um, and the Yeti uh, issues a framed token. I don't know how much uh, per day or per week, uh, which 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 stops it stops emitting the token after a year. Is that correct? So right now I wouldn't be getting anything anymore. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they still are because of the delay. So because we delayed the launch of the farms, we just extended that. Uh, right. Just so, so that no one, so that yes, it's not the community's fault. No. The website design took a little bit more time than anticipated. We found a few bugs that we're working on. So it's it's not the community's fault. So there's no need to, quote unquote, disadvantage yeah. them. Yeah, we're uh, we we just kept it going for now. And if 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 I if I buy a new um, Yeti, will it emit the token for another year, plus Correct. plus for yeah, next month? One per day. Yes. So yeah. we we're not worried about the Yeti selling out. It was never the intention to sell out the Yeti. Uh, the first couple of months. The idea, the, the 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 more people that own Yeti, the better for us. So yeah. we're under yeah. no uh, you know pressure to market it or to get investors to come and buy Yeti. No, we, we're not. We're doing nothing of the sort. We'd rather keep it organic. And people will realize once the farms launch that one frame per day is actually significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they will see the advantage of potentially minting new Yeti rather than having to buy a farm to stake in a farm. For one yeah. more year, and then later on they could, they would worry about the farm, because the the farm the farm release will coincide with uh, uh, will coincide with uh, frame 2.0. So, so frame frame uh, 2.0 changes our tokenomics, so it it, it oh, reduces. So frame frame 2.0 hasn't come into effect. Not yet. It will come into effect okay. end of July after the farm mint. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna because. I don't know. I know there's farms. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Uh, like you're talking to a blank canvas here. <laughs> so um, enlighten me because 
you've mentioned it a few times, but yeah, I, I'm not piecing it together. What is farms bringing to the Yeti ecosystem and how can I farm? I love farming. Okay, so I really um, the, the, he'll the, the... <laughs> sorry, he'll, he'll tell you, he's a genius. <laughs> Okay, so the uh, we've always announced that the Yeti will generate FRB for one year, and after that one year, we, we early on announced that we will introduce NFT staking, but it's going to be a gamified spin on NFT staking to continue earning uh, FRMD tokens. So the way the farms expansion works is um, we're going to have three types of farms. We're going to have the Cloud Nine farm, which is going to be the epic, the rare type of the rarest type. We're going to have the Arctic Glacier farms, and we're going to have the Frosty Peak farms, which would be the least rare. There's going to be 2,400 Frosty Peak farms, 1,200 uh, Arctic Glacier farms, and 400 Cloud9 farms. Now, the difference between the farms is obviously their design. Uh, the Cloud farms are going to be in the clouds. The Arctic Glacier farms are going to be in an Arctic setting, Arctic background, ice background, and the Frosty Peak farms are going to, are going to be in a, on, on a mountaintop with snow around them. Yeah. Yeah. Design-wise, the, the size of the farm itself, the house, the hut, is going to be different because the Cloud9 farm can house four Yeti, whereas the Arctic Glacier farms can house three Yeti, and the Frosty Peak farm can house two Yeti each. So you can stake two Yeti in the Frosty Peak, and then four Yeti in the Cloud9 form. Um, the way this works is after the one year is over, so after when you start staking your Yeti, the, the, the tribe type is going to play a role. Okay. Cloud, Cloud Yeti, once staked, will earn you the most FRMD per day, which is uh, 0.6 FRMD per day. The Ice Yeti, once staked, will earn you 0.4 framed, and then the uh, the Snow Yeti one stake will, own, will earn you 0 0.3 frame per day. Um, you can tell you're a numbers guy. You're remembering it all by heart. Yeah, yeah, work. yeah. Keep going. <laughs> have these staking uh, rates been published or is this yes. news? These have been published. Okay. And then the way this works is the farm, you, you can stake a certain number of Yeti in a farm. And then to add that gamified spin, farms will be upgradable. So you can upgrade each farm up to level 10. And then we also introduced um, um, synergies. So if you stake a Cloud Yeti in a Cloud Farm, so let's say you stake four Cloud Yeti in a Cloud Farm or three Cloud Yeti in a Cloud, cloud Farm, you, un you unlock synergy, which boosts your production another 10%. Mm. So Cloud Yeti in a Cloud Farm work together, Arctic yeah. uh, Ice Yeti in an Arctic uh, farm work better together, and then Snow Yeti in a snow farm work better together. Water Yeti, on the other hand, do not earn any FRMD. However, if you stake a Water Yeti in any farm, it boosts the entire production of the farm by 25%. And that's the least rare one, the water. Exactly. You have 4,000 Water Yeti and 4,000 farms. So ideally, you'd have one Water Yeti in each farm. So to boost okay. the entire farm production by 25%. Yeah. And with the farms, because I'm not remembering the numbers, but I'm, I'm totally getting the concept now. Um, is there too many farms as in, is there, will there be a fight for acquiring farm spots? So is there, because each farm can house, so Cloud Yeti, um, have you got enough farms for all the Cloud Yetis or is there a bit of a competition factor there where, you know, if you snooze, you lose. If all the farms get snapped up, uh, you see where I'm getting going. Yes. Um, or you don't want to reveal that in, that you've got that terms, smoke on your face. No, no, no. In, in terms of flat <laughs> numbers, um, there yeah. there are enough farms for all the yeti. Exactly. Okay. So the four thousand right. farms will be able to house all ten thousand yeti. Okay. Answer okay. my question. Yeah, well, but uh, because there's synergy. That's where it's mm -hmm. going to play a role. And then there are different strategies. Some people might not want to stake a water yeti. So let me give you one example. Yeah. So let's say you have the cloud farm with, with four slots. The, to get the most out of this farm, particular farm, you would have to stake four clouds, because obviously a cloud earns the most, and then upgrade your farm to level 10, because that's going to boost production as well. So then that would earn you the most FRMD per day out of that farm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. However, if you stake three clouds and one water yeti in it, and then you upgrade the farm to level 10, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a farm, it's going to earn you less than option one, which is staking four clouds, but you'd be earning more per yeti if you decide to stake the water. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Because the water is going to have an additional 25% boost. Yeah. So you're going to, so, so there's an individual farm efficiency. How close are you to, to, to farming the most out of this particular farm? Yeah. And then there's total efficiency in terms of, are you making the most of the Yeti that you own? Mm. And it'll be interesting to see which one people prefer. Would I want yeah. to get the most out of each Yeti? But that would mean less out of each individual farm versus do I just want to maximize on the farm that I own? So it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. There are a lot of nuances and intricacies there. It, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see what people do. But yeah. the, the overall effect is that once all 10,000 uh, Yeti are staked, so once they stop generating FRMD for the first year and they're staked, the maximum uh, daily inflation from the Yeti drops from 10,000 to 3,875. Okay. That's more than six, that's more than 60% drop per day. And that's and assuming... Yeah. Right? So, no, no, finish your sentence. I like to interrupt. That, that's, that's assuming that you have the ideal staking yeah. going on. So I have yeah, 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 full okay. system unlocked for all my Yeti, etc., etc., etc. So that's As the, for that's the, the entire idea. collection would have to be optimized, which won't happen. But which yeah, won't yeah. happen. So, so the real inflation yeah. value would be much less than three thousand eight hundred seventy-five per day. So, so my question around that was: how long? So how long will the farm enable inflation for? How long forever. will the farms last? Oh, forever. Okay. So, forever. Um, if I remember correctly, if the original was thirty-two million, and then there was a small percentage in inflation. Uh, is that? Or has that has changed with the revised token one? Um, yeah, so the, the reserve is 32 million. Um, yeah. The circulating supply is, I'm not sure, I need to check. That's, it's, he loves his numbers. <laughs> it, the loves circulating numbers. supply is, is almost 7 million now. So okay. um, um, the, way, the way it's going to work is um, we, we're, the, the sources of inflation are the Yeti collection, incentivizing voting, and minting new yeah. uh, minting new NFTs, so either framed NFTs or or partner NFTs. Of course. So with the with the with the with the farm collection, the daily inflation from Yeti is gonna drop. The incentives for voting are only uh, we're, we're only keeping them for two years. After yeah. we, we never said we're, we're gonna discontinue after two years. This was the original plan. Yeah. Um, and then obviously minting new NFTs is always gonna release new FRMD tokens. However, with the, with the new token update, with FRMD 2.0, we're now going to be buying back framed and locking that frame in a vault. And then it is that, and also upgrading farms, renaming farms, um, renaming so Yeti, all of that. How process. are you buying back that token? Uh, what, the what's list. changed? Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. So, well, currently, basically what we do is, let's say we have 500 ICX per day, uh, mm -hmm. We take 50%, we buy FRMD tokens, just to keep it simple. And then we pair them with the other 50%. So we spend 250 to buy FRMD, we pair them with the other 250 and just deposit them back into the pool. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with FRMD 2.0 is we're going to buy back, and we're going to use the full amount to buy FRMD, and then that FRMD is locked in the vault. Mm -hmm. And then it is, uh, what, what also will feed the vault is the tax. So the tax is going to be redirected to the vault. Every time anyone buys or sells FRMD, that tax is going to go to the vault. Um, and we're going to be using buybacks from revenue, which will include NFT sales and services uh, quarterly. And we're going to use that some money from that to buy FRMD and then lock that in the vault. And then the vault itself will be used to, put, to potentially um, continue incentivizing voting, for example. Yeah. Or... Or if the vault has a large enough reserve, we might dedicate one year's worth of Yeti inflation from the vault. So the, what, what, what effectively this does is recycles the token so that we don't inflate, so that it's not actual inflation. Just recycling the mm -hmm. tokens and using them to minimize as much as possible inflation from the reserve itself. And what about, because uh, from memory, what about your liquidity? Because your uh, protocol-owned liquidity, that's how the... Uh, 1.0 was designed so at the moment you're doing a lot of buys but how are you building in that pool 
You mean uh, uh, from, with... you mean adding liquidity? Yeah, yeah, we we will we will be adding liquidity from our own uh, framed uh, reserves, but that's something that we will do whenever the, when when we feel there's a need to do it. For now. Okay. Cool. I have a farm. I think question. that that's yeah. Go. Uh, that, I, I've, I've, I'm feeling good now. I know what the farm's about. Tick. So yeah, um, everyone's going to have different farm desires and requirements because everyone has different collections. Because the Yeti got minted like at random, so you never know if you got a cloud or a water or um, one of the others. Uh, the farms. Can I pick which one I purchase, or is it going to be like a random allocation? Random, random yeah. It would be right. random, and then you'd be able to um, trade on craft. Yeah. For, for uh, want. Yeah, because I can imagine now then the secondary market on craft is going to get a big boost because everyone's going to start puzzling and trying to fit in. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to have a, a couple of these left, but they need one of those. It's going to yeah, be exactly. a trading card game for Yeti yeah. on craft. A lot of people already started. Uh, once we revealed farms, a lot of people started selling yeti buying yeti maximizing on clouds uh, selling some waters uh, etc mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna there's gonna be a we're late fez <laughs> we're late <laughs> <laughs> guys just pause the interview right now <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, okay fez you look like a blank canvas again <laughs> we, we, we need to reconvene i thought i could strategize. pick my farm honestly uh, at the end of it I, I thought i could pick my farm i'm sweet i've got all the cloud yetis i'm good <laughs> Now, now it's going to be random. Oh crap! I'm screwed. Okay. Yeah. Well, we we, we talked. To, well, you talked a bit about Framed 2.0, and so that Framed is the ecosystem token or FRMD, um, and how you kind of initiate these buybacks based off of NFT sales, but also off of uh, node rewards. I guess we can clarify that Framed as a team, a project, a builder, uh, also runs a validator node, which secures the icon blockchain as a whole uh, is, is what you do. Yeah. That, that's what you've been doing for over a year now, I'd say. Yes. Um, yeah, in June. And we started yeah, in June. So, yeah. or I think early July, maybe. So almost one year. Uh, yeah. And then the uh, icon blockchain rewards validators for securing the network and keeping it decentralized. And then those, those rewards you're using to essentially boost the framed ecosystem and initiate these buybacks or and that's what when you talk about voting incentives is if people would go stake their icx and vote for framed they might expect a reward for that yes if they uh, vote for framed we reward them with frmd tokens is that currently yeah. the case yes it is currently yes. the case we give out 133,333 frmd per month <laughs> <laughs> what a random number <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he just knows it. I Nothing's it. random with with, with Andy. Okay, so <laughs> proportionally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, people can stake those FRMD tokens to earn ICX. Now, the ICX comes from um, the node and from secondary sales. So, so basically... Uh, the, yes. Yeah, so so you, you vote for, framed, uh, for the frame node, you get FRMD tokens. Yeah. which you can sell if you want to, or you can stake them. If you stake them, you get ICX back. The ICX comes from partly from the node rewards and partly from the secondary sale royalties. So the way the system works currently is we, um, we, 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 don't, uh, we, we use the fuller nodes fully for the, for the ecosystem. We just take uh, what's necessary to keep the node running, so the operational costs of the node. The rest, 50% uh, goes towards liquidity, the protocol of liquidity. 25% is being used for the uh, bond daily because we keep we need to keep adding to the bond. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of the bond now comes from personal funds uh, and also some community funds. So the priority for us is to secure the bond fully because let's say, I don't know, there's a, there's a bull market and ICX goes back to $5, people are going to want to sell. So that would leave us vulnerable. So the priority for us is to, see, is to secure the bond. And one way, the best way to do this is uh, to dedicate some node rewards back to the bond until we become fully sustainable. So 25% uh, are used uh, for the bond. 15% of the node rewards are given back to FRMD stakers. And 10% uh, remains in the treasury. <clears throat> 
that's how the node rewards are being used. And then whatever is in the treasury is used for expenses. Like if we need to, uh, I don't know, uh, we have a development uh, expense that we need to pay for, we do that. If we need to pay someone for something, we do that. So that's used for expenses. And if you stake framed, um, you say you, you'll, you'll receive ICX in return as mm -hmm. well. Um, does that just get transferred to your wallet or are you supposed to go claim that? Uh, no, that that's website? automatically sent automatically yeah. sent to your wallet daily. 15% uh, from the 15% share of the node rewards and 50% of the uh, secondary sales royalties are given back to the community as well. Yeah. To, to all the FMD stakeholders. Cool, 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 cool. And the... Um... Last one on the farms, because the farms were initially um, announced to get released. Um, they were priced at $60. And then mm -hmm. recently I read that you had actually um, repriced them. Yeah. They're going on sale for $40. Yeah. What what caused the shift in uh, pricing for the farms that are coming up for Framed, or for Yeti, actually? When, when we released the, um, the original pricing, a lot of the community members... The community was extremely supportive, but a lot of them expressed uh, their views that $60 might be a little bit too expensive. And considering the length of the bear market, uh, which we've been, uh, we, we're in, yeah. we've done some calculations and then we thought we need, we, we wanted to meet the community halfway. Yeah. So we, we settled on $40. $40 is still okay for us. And it would be, you know, it's us showing the community that we care for your opinion and it's not about making money. It's about getting some money. Yes. So that we can continue providing value for you and, and, yeah. our, products and our ecosystem. And some buyer psychology there. Um, 60 Fez would only purchase one, but at 40 Fez might purchase two. Fez purchase two. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Two so, cloud funds. The, um, Remember that time you mentioned like a screen share? Uh, oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Remember? And, yes. Um, I was just wondering, like, you know. How about now? <laughs> yeah, hey, why not? Sure, let's do it. Dead curious. What, what, what's going to be shared now? The, the upcoming Yeti website. Right. Oh. Is that yeti.com? No. Yeti.com.au. No, can you, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's popping it up right now. Here we go. All right. So this would be the new Yeti website. Here's, here's some alpha for you. This would be our new connection model. Oh, my goodness. Now, obviously, this is not going to go live uh, from the start. That's just the way our connection models are going to look like with Xcall coming online soon and, and all of that. I was going to say, I can smell Xcall uh, through my yeah. screen. Now, these, some of these stats are still not updated. Obviously, this is still a work in progress. It's, it's almost there, though. We're almost ready. Uh, you've got the different farms. So this would be a cloud farm. This would be an Arctic glacier farm. And this would be a frosty peak farm. Very cool. By the way, all, all of our farms use uh, sustainable energy, like the green energy, <laughs> non-polluting. The green power plant. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have an FRMD. Sorry. sorry. And if I'm the section at the end, this would be the mint page. Wow. Is this, was it, was this built by your partner design house? Yes. Yes. It was built by design house. <clears throat> this would be the, the app. Oh my goodness. So you've What's got the happening? farming efficiency, production, etc. Then you've got your farms. Then you could expand on your farm. You would see the farm, th that farms, particular farm statistics on the left, on the right here. A brief description of the farm, the traits of that particular farm. You could rename your farm if you want to, if you want to give it a cool name and make it uh, make it about you. And then this would be the staking interface. So let's say I want to stake uh, ICE, ICE Yeti. I click on the ICE Yeti logo. It loads all of the ICE Yeti in your wallet. That's cool. You just, you just yeah. select the Yeti that you want to stake. And then you can just basically click on them to remove them. This is very cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a so let's, massive say, let's, take, let's say I want to mm. stake three snow yeti, and then the fourth one I want it to be a water. I just click on water, select that water yeti, and then and, confirm it. And does it does it change? It'll change all the stats. So as you're picking yes. and choosing, optimizing, so you can see what's gonna. Exactly. As you change the staked yeti here, 
these numbers on the right are going to change as well. So what, what's going to see is as you upgrade the, the farms, so let's say I want to upgrade to level 9, to level 10. I select level 10, and then it will show me the total cost at the bottom, the productivity of my farm. I upgrade, and everything will change. And an upgrade now, because I meant to ask this before, you upgrade with uh, FRMD token. You so upgrade that's with, with FRMD tokens, yes. And those tokens go to the vault and are locked, and then will be recycled and reused uh, within the frame ecosystem. This is cool. So you're going to have the ranking page, which is going to double as your gallery. You can just toggle between your own collection versus uh, all of the Yeti out there uh -huh. uh, ranked. And then you can toggle between Yeti and farms. And then you see at the top the floor price of each of the different tribes. You can expand on a Yeti to, to see its individual uh, traits. And then you can look at the history of that Yeti, similar, similar to what you see on Craft, basically. And then the last page would be the market activity page. It would show you um, the, 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 most, the most recent buys and it links you to Craft as well. Is this pulling the information from Craft? Yes, this would pull information from Craft. And then you can toggle between Yeti and Farms, obviously. Wow. That is a very nice development. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. I might have to like, yeah, negotiate it's four different. or five farms here at home now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely different... Um, I mean, we took our time with the website because it's the first major release with our design partners. Yeah. So we, we wanted to, uh, you know, we wanted to look good. To we wanted to be responsive, fast. Uh, so that's why we, 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 we've taken our time, but it's worth it. I guess. I guess uh, um, community members could use a cheat sheet for the, you know, for the for, for the farms uh, to see like what fits into which farm and all that. Because I know you write announcements and uh, blogs through your Medium page. Mm. Um, yeah, I could definitely do with a cheat sheet that just helps me figure out how I'm going to configure this because now, there, there is something I didn't show you on the website, but on the staking interface, there's an information icon. If you click it, it would open up this huge window, which shows you what, e what boost every level gives you, how much does the water Yeti give you, etc. So how much there does you this do? So just for you to be able to do some calculations. And then we'll, we'll have probably on Discord, um, um, I'm, I mean, maybe we can publish something on Discord. It's a good idea. Or, or, or maybe a medium article that will serve as a, as a reference. The Discord. Discovery is half, half the... Is, 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 the frame, is the frame Discord the place to be for, for, for more information or insights on uh, how to, yeah. you know... Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you already have community members who are thinking of strategies and this would be best and this would be best and then doing calculations on how much it's going to cost to upgrade the farm and how much it's yeah. going to take yeah. to make the money back, etc. It's always popping in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's switch on notifications then and, uh, and go have a look. Um, that is that is exciting. Is there is there you might have mentioned this already, but that that particular website that you just showed is that is the go live date for that? Were you mentioning like the fourteenth of July or seventeenth of July for that? The seventeenth of July, we're we're aiming to have the homepage ready, okay, um, and the mint page. It, the, the, the rest the rest is ready, but there's no point in having the rest of the website published until staking is live, like fully yeah. live. Okay. That's going to come. We, we, we don't know the date yet because we are doing, uh, Thomas is doing some revisions on the staking contract. Once those are complete, we'll know exactly uh, when this will go live. It could be at the same time as the mint or it could be a couple of weeks later. I don't, I don't yeah. know. We, we, still, we still need to wait. Yeah. Well, if the community is good at anything, it's waiting and hanging tight. So, uh... <laughs> yeah. and, and we mean that as in. The entire community. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone. Yeah. 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 Uh, we know it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I think this is great. Solid overview of Yetis. I am. I mean, I, I totally um, went berserk and bought a bunch of Yetis, and then, uh, as with everything, kind of forgot. So I was keen to get an update on where things were progressing, how we're moving. I was telling David, I can't wait. Uh, the farms concept, I wasn't across 2.0, and it annoys me when I'm not across stuff. So um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Thank you for that. And it's all about me. Sorry, David. Uh, so, and, uh, 
David's smiling, so I'm guessing he's feeling good as well. So, I am. see, see, called it. Okay, next. The 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 next thing you'll have a game. It's we hmm. we we talked about it a little bit. You've been dropping cards every week. You've revealed how many cards there are. I want more, and I don't mean I want a release date. But I've tried privately to ask y'all, and everyone not willing to give that. But let's let's talk about the game. What what is the game going to be like? Is it just simply a game? Will it be? Will Yetis be involved in it somehow at all? If anything, is there any collaboration across projects? Yeah. I, Let's let's get a bit of a download on this game. Yeah, so uh, the game that's that's the project. That's that's the project where you know uh, we have yes. a lot of resources put in. Hundred um, percent. Are we talking so, Thania? Thania, yes. yes. So Thania, yes. Thania is going to be uh, Thania is a trading card game. It is going to have elements of play to earn in it. Um, yes. Now, the, f the full tokenomics of the game haven't been finalized. We're still looking at different options. So uh, I, won't, I won't talk about that now. Because um, I've been reading up a lot on the, you know, the recent developments in P2E and the view. Uh, a lot of the articles have the title, P2E is dead, like traditional P2E, yeah. et cetera. So we're, we're looking at everything, and we're going to make sure that the game economy is sustainable and fair uh, for everyone. So the way it's going to work, it's going to be based on an auto battler system. So you're going to have the, um, the, the the a player would build a deck of cards, twenty cards, and then you would battle against someone else. And then the way it works is an AI engine is going to do the battle for you, and it's going to play your cards in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you based will on be the card stats and stuff, yeah. Based on the card stats, yeah. mana cost, yeah. etc. It's going to play it in the best possible way for you. So minimizing error in that sense. But then we're also going to add uh, a bit of features that will allow you to have some kind of customization. So for example, you might force the AI to play one card before another one, for example, if you wanted to. Yeah. So it adds an, an, a, some, some manual control over the AI engine. So we're gonna, you're going to have the ability to do that. So I can do some dumb stuff anyways. <laughs> you can still do some dumb stuff if you Add want. Add some to. character to the to the <laughs> to the batch. Yeah, and uh, then there are a lot of synergies between different characters that work well together. Like uh, I don't know, one card would give you, for example, for every undead creature that has died that game, you get plus one attack, plus one defense, for example. So you build you build your deck taking into consideration these different synergies, and then yeah. you play that card towards the end, and then you have like seven undead monsters that died in that game then automatically that card would get plus seven plus seven which is huge so you have a lot of things that you can do within the game um, what, what what will it look like in terms of uh playing it like are, are we thinking i don't know uh, an unreal engine world where i have a character walking around or is it simply no. 2d yeah. looking from the top just yeah, like a it's, board it's like you'd have a I wish, I wish it was a, like a full Unreal world, but no, it's no, not. That, that would be too yeah. much. That would be like I'm walking no. through like Yu-Gi-Oh or one of those. Yeah. Um, it's just not yet. No, no. Come on. <laughs> not We're yet. Yeah, in alpha. 2D playing, just the way you're yeah, supposed so to play like a, a Like a classic card game, sort yeah. of trading card game. And um, that opens up mobile compatibility, like on the go. Yeah, you're going to be able to yeah. play it on mobile and you're going to be able to play it uh, on your... Uh, on your computer it's going to be web-based initially so the initial release will be web-based yeah and then hopefully if the game is successful then really the sky is the limit where what yeah. version two and three will look like yeah but because we already have multiple seasons planned and the storyline is ready and everything um the way you're going to play it now is you will select an opponent then the ai would immediately submit a transaction and then the ai will immediately tell you the outcome of the game and then what you do is you watch a replay yeah and when you, when you watch a replay, you see the full deck, like the full board, the deck, and how the cards are being played with all the effects, etc. And then once you watch that replay, you can now, this will inform your strategy. So you can, you can know what changes to make, for example, based on the, the, the way the, the, uh, the AI behaved, the way the cards were played. You can then make, and make certain tweaks and then play against that person again. Yeah, because you would get um, a result immediately. Yes. But you wouldn't know why you lost. 
exactly. You would watch uh, you would watch the replay to see how the game happened, and then this this would then make you, allow you to make tweaks to your deck, whether if you want to play against that same person or someone else. Yeah. So, yeah, That's I used to play this online soccer manager game where oh. indeed the match would be simulated, but yeah, I could yeah, also yeah. rewatch it, which I would do maybe once or twice, but most of the time I would just keep clicking and then I kept losing and I didn't know what to do. But uh, <laughs> thanks for the tips, <laughs> I guess. So see, yes. the trading card game scene, yeah, uh, I wasn't familiar with any of this before I got into crypto and uh, blockchain. And it's quite a common... Uh, real in real life gaming element element to bring to crypto because of the way that you can integrate cards and stats and value. Um, so I guess a lot of people uh, are like me in the sense that they've never played like a real trading card game before. I had Pokemon cards, but I was just collecting them and I had them up yeah, yeah, yeah. on the bookshelf and Man. I was proud of them <laughs> and I had one shiny one, uh, but I never played that game. So I guess, you know, I'd need a lot of cheat sheets uh, to play a trading card game. But willing to try, obviously. Yeah, look, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the same boat. Um, yeah, I have yeah. no idea how to play either. So. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew is the big uh, TCG yeah. fan, so yeah. he's uh, he's been playing TCGs for a long time. Uh, I've played TCGs okay. to some extent, but when I hear them talking, like him and Alton and some of the others yeah. talking about TCGs, I just keep my mouth closed because. Yeah. I know th th these are the big leagues, and I'm just like a little kid, you know. I just sit, yeah. sit, sit, and listen. <laughs> I, I was actually AI. gonna say, yeah, I, I was actually gonna say, like Alton and Andrew, like th these these aren't this isn't a trading card game that uh, you know someone's taken a project. And, oh yeah, we can throw a trading card game into this, and you know it adds extra utility. No, these guys like love this shit. Like they're, they're, yeah, they're TCG breather. stuff like yeah, exactly. And they're dream. And I know this because Andrew used to talk to me and, and the guys used to always get excited about it. even for me, TCG, I just never got into that format. Uh, I played a couple of Hearthstone, this, that, so I totally get the concept and I know people are like completely mad about it. But these guys, they, they were mad about it and love it and their dream was to create a game. So uh, then yeah. when it, all this started to drop, it's like, yeah, this, this is the, these are guys who are extremely passionate about this space it is their baby basically um 100%. on top of the babies they have but <laughs> their gaming baby uh so yeah no really excited to see it come to fruition so I, we we as well i mean there's so so much that goes into it there's uh literally 500 years worth of lore in Thania. oh dang i mean pe people might not realize this but the storyline is so rich it's it's yeah. insane ridiculous who wrote it uh, well, I wish oh, Andrew were here. It's based, it's based on this uh, Dungeons & Dragons campaign that's been going on for, I think, eight or ten years that yeah. his cousin and brother uh, came up with. Oh, no way. They yeah. invented all these characters and all the story and the lore. and like It's literally almost 500 years of lore. So, yeah. okay. and, and also, we're having a custom soundtrack built for the game. A friend of mine is, is actually a composer, so we've had we have four tracks ready. The the soundtrack is amazing. I mean, I wish I could share something here, but I don't think I can share audio. Can I? Uh, you, oh, wow. you, you could you could sing it if, if you want. I wish. <laughs> you, 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 don't want, you don't want me to do that. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so we're 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 um, towards the end of our of our interview hour here. Um, and I guess I have one last uh, question to inject, and I, I guess the answer could be long or short. Um, Icon's X-Call service is currently being focus tested. There's an incentivized testnet coming up where projects can try it out, see uh, how it works, how it can work for their projects, how it can help them achieve this interoperability, which would open up a lot of opportunities for any dApp uh, on a blockchain. Is Xcall something that you guys are looking at? Um, if so, how? Jeff? Uh, so obviously, yeah, of the ability to go cross-chain uh, with with other chains and obviously in bring bring the, the users from from that sort of, well, let's say, uh, Binance, for example, um, users from Binance 
um, BSC in particular um, to come across and, and interact with the, the game. Um, hopefully, we'll have something to do with one of our actual partners. Um, but yeah, that's probably a bit further further down the line to try and get them involved. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, look, heavily, heavily um, waiting on it to come and then, yeah, going to be a heavy user of it. Yeah. And then this would extend to all framed slash partner or ecosystem projects. Right. So Yeti would be accessible cross-chain. Thenia, obviously, you could play against people on any supported chain. Yeah. Um, so it, could, is it safe to say that um, framed uh, in, interoperability would be powered by Xcall? Yes. So, yeah. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Short answer, yes. Lovely. Well, <laughs> on that bombshell, Fez, did you have any other questions to, 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 to wrap it up, I suppose? No, look, honestly, I feel like I've gotten everything I, I wanted to know. Terrible. Uh, yeah, I've asked you all the questions, but in, in general, no, uh, I don't. You, David? Uh, no, but maybe the guys want to, want to if they have anything up their sleeve that they want to share or, or get out well, there or a couple of shout outs, maybe. It's already out there, so we might as well mention it now. Uh, we forgot to mention Redemption, which is an upcoming project with Alter, uh, which is still in the pipeline, uh, but not, not in the immediate future. And we already did reveal to our community that there will be a new project that we are secretly working on for a while now. It's going to be called Fractal, F-R-A-C-T-L, -A with, with a dash on the A to go with the frame theme. And the missing vowel, so fractal and framed. Um, that's all I say. But there's something. <laughs> that's all you say. <laughs> what, what? Now I do have questions. We're back to questions. <laughs> fractal. Fractal. Yes. And okay, so I I need to go dig in the Discord and start scrolling back for a couple of days to figure out more on that. Is it? More, no more. I think we talked about it first for the first time maybe a month ago. Okay. In Discord. Okay. okay. He'll but find it, it. He's it, very good at it that. Has to do, it has to do with NFTs, but a completely different application. So let's, I'll just mention it very briefly. It's something that has to do with real world assets. Uh -huh. RWAs. Hot. RWAs. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. 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 Well, but again, excited to get more. Not, not in the immediate future. It is something that is coming a bit later. Not yeah. today, tomorrow. Got it. <laughs> guys thank you so much for this uh thank lovely hour i think it was packed with uh with with alpha cool information we got the screen share we got um some very interesting tidbits dropped and it's definitely piqued my interest uh for for what the framed and the framed ecosystem has to offer um so yeah i guess i'll be um logging back in to see what kind of yeti i do have and i'm going to be looking for uh for more information on those farms but that's just one of the many things that we covered um thanks and uh yeah us. hopefully thank you, uh thank you for having us. We, we, we can do another uh another one in uh in two three months hey talking I'll about talk wearing many here. caps okay, and, and all the community thank you for the community thank you guys thank for you, having yeah. us it's always a pleasure Thanks. Right. Thanks, guys. And and look, just for everyone listening, remember, um, not financial advice. Two guys love the ecosystem, trying to bring our builders to the front line, share their stories, what they're doing, and that's what this is about. So um, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Bye. for having us.